Uh, Coach, congratulations on the win. It, it certainly went down to the last minute uh, today. Tell us about the flow of the game. The offense was very strong in the first half, but the defense gave up a lot of yards in the second half. Ken, I'm having a tough time hearing you. I think somebody's got their mic on. I'm, I'm having a tough time hearing the question. Can you repeat it? Sure. I just was asking about the flow of the game. The first half, you were scoring a lot of points, making defensive plays. But in the second half, the defense gave up a lot of, a lot of yards quickly, you know, on four drives. Uh, uh, just tell us about the flow of the game, uh, if you would. Well, we, we, made, we made enough errors in the first half to lose the game. And that's uh, on both sides of the ball. So, you know, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a real clean performance all the way through. Uh, you know, in the first half, we had three busted coverages: one for a seventy-three yard touchdown, one that set up another touchdown, um, and just that that's that's not things we can get away with very often. We're very fortunate we won the game doing doing things like that. And you know, offensively, uh, the, there in the fourth quarter, we had a chance to put the thing away twice. And, uh, and didn't do it in the first half. The opening drive, we take it down there. We fumble in the red zone. We can't do that here. We, we are very, very lucky to have won the game. And had we done those things better, the things we can control, I think it, it would have been a different story in terms of the way that, that game finished up. But you know, the bottom line is we made enough plays. We did enough good things throughout the day. And we made enough plays as a team to win. And and so I'm proud of our team for that. We certainly got a, a lot to learn from, from, from this game. And Coach, just, I, I asked Christian about the fifth touchdown, the sequence before when he gets sacked for a six yard loss. And then, then, uh, then he runs 15 yards to get, to get back, runs left to the nine. And then, uh, then, uh, then uh, Jacoby Buchanan looks like he scores a touchdown, but there's a penalty, it's brought back. But then he runs 13 yards on the next play for the touchdown. Did you feel good that? Whatever happened, the team was able to get the touchdown in that sequence. Sure, just the resiliency of our of our the offensive unit out there, and uh, and and just overall the resiliency of our team today. I thought our guys really showed that that uh, that character and that grit. So it's, it was uh, it's great to see us be able to finish that drive because with that, that holding call got us put them in a bad in a bad pickle right there. Thank you, coach. Thanks. And McMillan? Jeff, I'm sure you had the range of emotions today. I know you were pretty upset going into halftime because of the mistakes that you had mentioned on, uh, on radio. But, um, you know, how do you think the team responded in the second half? Well, I think they, that's what they did. They responded. They didn't react. You know, there were things that didn't go our way, uh, some things we, we, we screwed up, and, uh, and, and they just they responded and they came back and made the plays that we needed to. And, and we certainly allowed them to make it a lot closer than it needed to be. And, and that was, uh, that was a little agonizing, but, uh, you know, sometimes it's that way. Sometimes you get into a competition and you're fighting for your life and you got to go all the way to the end. And that's what our guys did. They, they managed to do it. I know you would like to keep a team scoreless, uh, but you're facing a passer who was, you know, tops in the nation last year. I thought there were times where you, you really made life tough for him, but you know, he showed his, um, guts and pulled out some touchdowns in the end. So how do you, how do you judge a game like this where you give up over 400 yards passing, but you got the job done? We've got to see where we, we could have been covering their receivers better when we were in zone and, and staying with our guy in man-to-man -man coverage where we didn't. Um, like I said, the, the, the blown coverages are just, you know, I'm, I'm still disappointed about those, and I'll remain disappointed. We can't do that if we're going to expect to play good defense and give our, our team a chance to win. Not at Army, we can't do that. And yeah. just give me your – I'm sorry, give me your overall assessment of Christian today. I thought Christian played a really good football game. Uh, I think the one uh, – the, the, the sack that we gave up there in the fourth quarter on that drive that, uh, that Ken Kreitzer was asking about, we had talked to him about that before the drive, don't – don't take a sack. If we throw the ball, don't take a sack. And we just, we got to throw the thing on time. And he had to hold it, hold it. And, and uh, you know, that that's the one thing all day that I would say that uh, I'd like to, to have him take back. Uh, but I thought he did a really good job with his reads, distributing the ball, pitching the ball, 
uh, threw the ball well and got us out of some jams. So he, he just played like a veteran and really proud of his effort. It looked like there were a lot of designed play calls today for him as opposed to reads. Uh, is that true? Did Western show you something that made, made it look like, hey, give Christian the ball here? Oh, uh, we've, we've run a lot of quarterback run plays, designed quarterback run plays, uh, probably since I've been here, but really starting with Ahmad Bradshaw. He's the guy that uh, we really started to do that a lot for and, and, and have continued. So last week with Tyre, there were a lot of design runs in the first two drives for him. Uh, we ran some with Christian as, as the uh, game went along. You know, late in the game against Georgia State, we were running Jamel over there, and their safeties were tackling him for a one-yard gain. That's when we threw the play-action pass there late in the game. So, it, it, you know, those are design runs for the quarterback. And we had plenty of read plays and plenty of triple option plays we ran a day, midline and outside veer and, and, uh, and, and those kinds of things, but, but also some two-way options and some just called quarterback runs as well as, as, well as called fullback and called, called slot runs. Sure. Thanks, Jeff. Billy Witts. <clears throat> Hi, Jeff. Um, yeah, I was just wondering if you could speak a little bit to just the atmosphere um, today and just, you know, it's the first time in almost two years of, you know, playing in front of fans at a home game and um, just all the, uh, well, I guess, as, as you put it earlier, when I talked to you, just the pomp and circumstance of, of uh, you know, this week and today. Oh, it was great to be out there and it was great to, to have fans. I thought the Corps cadets did a, a fantastic job of cheering for, for their team and and uh you know we're just we're just an extension of the core out there so really those are our teammates and i thought they did a, a fantastic job but to look around and see fans in the stands and to hear that roar again after a big play it was a lot of fun i know our, our players were charged up and excited and and uh so i hope i hope the crowds will continue to grow and uh and they'll, they'll want to come out and see this team play thank you We'll go with Aaron. Hey, Coach. This doesn't have anything to do with this present game, but while you guys were playing, John Radigan was elevated to the active roster for the Seattle Seahawks. How do you react to that kind of news and knowing what he did for your team? I'm not surprised. Um, it, it goes for, for the other guys, too, for Cole Christensen and Elijah Riley, who were on practice squads. I, when they got... Uh, and they got accepted onto the practice squad. I sent them all a text message, and uh, I reminded them how difficult those jobs are to get, and how difficult they are to keep. So they they are very fortunate to be associated with an organization in the NFL, and uh, and and those guys are just they're tough, good football players. They all play special teams, and I'm sure they're they're doing those things for those teams that they're a part of now, and. And uh, so I'm really happy for John and proud of him. Not surprised. He's a really good football player. And uh, I'm sure I'm sure they're going to be really, really happy with his performance, just, just how hard he plays and how tough he is. And just one overall thing you learned from your team today and their performance. We got a, we got a tough football team that uh, that'll stay the course. They're resilient. They, they, they truly have that black flag mentality that, uh, that we're just going to fight to the finish. And, uh, you know, the warrior ethos of the United States Army I think is a great description for what we want to be as a team. And, uh, and that's I'll place the mission first. I'll never quit. I'll never accept defeat. And I'll never leave a fallen comrade. And, and I think our guys play that way and they feel that sense of brotherhood with, with their comrades on the field. And, and uh, so they just, they just continue to battle and, and nothing seems to shake them. So really proud of their effort. I think that's what got us to, to the finish line today. Charles, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, first of all, congratulations on the win today. Um, I want to go back to the first quarter where Markel made an outstanding interception. A few plays later, uh, fullback Anthony Atkins uh, fumbles the ball and turns it over. Is that a, a, basically indicative of, of how the game was played today by the Black Knights? Uh, the high and lows of the game, if you will. Absolutely, and uh, and there's there's an opportunity to score, 
and it was, I think, believe it was 21 to seven and a half time. It could have been, it could have been 28 to seven and a half time. Uh, that would have been a much more comfortable lead. And that, that, that's kind of the way it went. We, we would stop them and we'd get them into third down and we busted a coverage and they went 73 yards. You know, we, we had a, uh, we had a third down there in the, in the third quarter and, uh, and had a chance to get them off the field and they hit a long pass. And, and we, we were doing a good job of getting in position to get them off the field. We just couldn't seem to do it. And, uh, and then offensively, um, we converted a bunch of fourth downs and, uh, and then we get in there where we can put the game away and finish it off. And they, they whip us on a block and, and we didn't make the play and they go down and score and, and uh, you know that that's uh, that that that's where we've got to finish those drives and on both sides and and, uh, and 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 win in those situations. So it's a it's a learning opportunity for us. Uh, I'm 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 disappointed with how we executed you know, and in a lot of places, but I'm very happy that we made enough plays to win. We executed very well uh, on on some other things that that put us in position to win. Great. My final question is, um, we've been calling this fullback you, but I, I saw one member of the fullback uh, group uh, not out there today unless I missed something, Tyson Riley. Uh, can you bring us up to status with uh, with uh, Tyson? We had hoped that uh, that he might get healthy over the course of the week to be able to play today, and, and he just wasn't quite there. He's a lot closer than uh, to playing than he is from, from not. So uh, I think he's on the mend, and uh, hopefully – having a rest yesterday and today we, we were going to practice him yesterday and just our trainers evaluated him and he couldn't go so to rest yesterday and today and sunday and monday when we got our day off i think that you know the extra four days of rest hopefully tuesday he's going to be able to come back out and really figure out if he can play next week and i hope he will be able to great thanks again and congratulations again thank you, charles we'll do a few more for coach beth uh... You uh, had I counted at least seven players who kind of went down today for Army. Uh, Eckert and Bishop obviously looked a little more serious, but Ruby Law, Cockrell, Carter, Walters, McDuffie all went down at aspects. So, uh, where do you stand uh, health-wise? You think um, that was that was definitely a tough game. It was. It was a physical game. I went through the training room afterwards, and and uh, the uh, the doctors hadn't had a chance to see those guys yet. They they they'll take a shower. And, uh, and they'll go through the training room. So when we get off the call here, I'll go down and check with the trainers and just see how we're doing. But I saw a couple of them hobbling around the, the locker room. So they're, you know, they they were hurt and legit. And uh, it, uh, that happens as part of football. Mm -hmm. And I thought uh, Knapp filled in quite well for, uh, <clears throat> for Bishop when he went out. He did a good job. He's a tough kid. He's a great leader. And, uh, and I thought he did a tremendous job. Thanks, Jeff. Hey coach, I just want to ask you about the play of your slot backs. Uh, I think TV last week thought that you should be getting the ball out to the perimeter more, but uh, Tyrell Robinson, uh, 81 yards, seven carries, and uh, and uh, and also Brahim, uh, Brahim Murphy got the touchdown pass, 40 yards. Uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, about that, about how you were able to get the ball out to your slot backs today. Oh, we had some pitch plays, um, and, and some of them were two-way options, some of them were three-way options. Um, you know, as I said, we were, we were running the midline, running the outside beer, uh, running the zone option plays. Some were call plays for the quarterback. Some were pitch plays. And, uh, and so we were able to get the ball pitched out there a couple of times, and, and we got the, the edge knocked down. And they made some good plays. Those guys are fast enough to, to, uh, to get it rolling pretty good if we can get it out there to them. So it's, it's not always as easy as just saying, hey, we're going to run an outside play. Uh, they got people right up on the line of scrimmage, and – and uh, you know, getting getting the ball disengaged from the fullback, and uh, and getting it out there to a guy that's that's coming on an angle that you're not sure if he's taking you as the quarterback or taking the pitch. You know, sometimes you just don't want to take the risk of of running a pitch play. So that, that that's that's part of it. But you know, hey, the guys on TV are doing their job. That, that's their job to to you know critique and see you know see what they can help us with. And, yeah. Hey, Coach, yeah. I just wanted to ask you about, um, you know, particularly that play that the uh, Bailey Zapp ran 11 yards for a touchdown at the end of the second quarter. 
Yeah. Uh, it seemed like it was tough. You were back in, in fast coverage. It was hard to get put pressure on him. He found the route to the outside for the right to score. It seemed like it was you were emphasizing pass coverage today over the rush. Oh, I, I wouldn't say that. I mean, we had a twist on, and the guy that was twisting to the outside didn't get out there. He didn't get out there to contain, and uh, we needed to have a contain player. So I don't know. I don't know why he couldn't get out there. Maybe you know, maybe he just got hung up on a block, or you know, yeah. Got, got his jersey grabbed a little bit. That happens sometimes, part of football. And uh, he didn't get out there. But that wasn't the only time we didn't contain the quarterback. And that was that was disappointing to me. Um, and uh, I know our defensive coaches kept talking to our players about it, about, about getting, getting leverage on the quarterback and not letting him escape. So that's something we're going to have to fix. And uh, there, there were – that wasn't the only play. There were a number of plays where we didn't do that. One, one was a busted assignment where we were supposed to be bringing edge pressure uh, from a different player, and he dropped into coverage and should have been on the rush. So, um, that, again, that's, that's completely on us, and, uh, and that's a, a, a mental error that, that we've got to control and, and not allow them to make a play because we didn't do what we were supposed to do. So, uh, again, that's, that's my job. It's my job as a coach. And, and to get our coaches to to get these guys to play fundamentally sound, and, and we're going to work toward that next week. And last one for Coach. What's going Hi, on? Coach. Jeff, I, Jeff I, um, I just wanted to go back to the uh, on, onside kicks. Uh, Marquell had said that, uh, you know, that's something that you practice in great detail every Friday. And I'm just wondering, as a coach, do you, when you, you have moments – like like that and you had a couple of them do you just rely on kind of hey we did we put in the preparation or is there anxiety over you know just sort of the random randomness of how a ball might bounce um i mean you you don't know how that ball is going to bounce so you're you're hoping that your guys are in position number one they're not outflanked or out leveraged by by other players um, and that when the ball does come to them, they use good fundamentals to recover the kick. We don't, we don't just practice it on Fridays. I mean, we, we practice lining up on Fridays to make sure we align correctly uh, in those situations. But we do individual work where we actually kick onside kicks at those players that are on that team. And, uh, and that's something that I think paid off more than anything was – there's one thing to line up to it's another thing to to recover a kick that's bouncing or a ball is bouncing around on the ground that's not easy to do and all three of those guys or all three of those times mark well twice and simon dellinger on the last one were, were all very big plays 